Hey, what's happening, everybody? I don't know if you're like me, but if your house was built in 2010s-ish time period, you got these ugly can lights that the contractors cheap out and put in for you. Um, they're these six inch or even eight inch cans that have these, uh, C they call them CFL uh, fluorescent bulbs. And you know, at the time they were kind of the cheapest option, but still energy efficient. They did have LED out at the time, but it was sort of cost prohibitive. It was new technology, although it's much more efficient. Um, so anyways, these bulbs, they just don't last forever. And it's a real pain to get up. If you got a high ceiling like me to get way up there and change them out and, uh, gets old after a while. And not to mention these bulbs are almost impossible to find the same color and the same, uh, uh, lumens that the, the original contractor put out. These are four prongs. Home Depot does carry them. They always have different styles. They never match the ones you have. I was lucky to find a case of these on Amazon right after, right after we moved in. They started going bad already and uh, it's a brand new house in 2014 and just got old trying to find these all the time and thankfully LED technology has come down in price quite a bit and uh, anyhow uh, so at the moment my kitchen and uh you know i got like three different colors of lights going on here just because that's all we could find at the time that one there in the middle has got a bad ballast so new bulb's not going to fix him but that one over there is burned out and it was just replaced like a year and a half ago so it's kind of frustrating so anyways uh oh and another thing that goes bad is uh or is bad is that as these bulbs start wearing out they take forever to heat up and to fully illuminate. So as you get into your kitchen, it's dim and kind of looks like a lounge for about five minutes, you know, until uh, everything's where it needs to be. So anyhow, I'm going to go through how to replace one of these very easily without getting into your attic, which is very fun to do in a central California middle of the summer afternoon or whenever you get around to doing it. Um, it's all done from the bottom. Granted, you have a ladder that can get up there. And this one's just barely big enough for me to stand on the maximum height step and get up there. I mean, I'm just a hair under six feet tall, so it's um, still a challenge, but the lower ones are much easier. I've got it down to about 10, 15 minutes per fixture to retrofit these. It was a learning experience. It's the first one I did. Took a little longer and made a big mess but it overall wasn't so bad basically you're going to go up there and abandon your ballast reuse some of the existing wiring and uh, retrofit it with these new led drop-in can light replacements and according to the box here got these at home depot uh, not the most expensive ones on the market but Apparently, uh, according to Home Depot, well, wherever it says on the box here somewhere, these are supposed to last like 40 years or something like that. Being that I'm 42 years old, I think that's a pretty good deal. If I'm still here in 42 years, well, hopefully by then I'll pay somebody to do this for me. And uh, anyways, let's get started. All right, so these are at Home Depot. This is the... Uh, I'm sure Lowe's carries something similar or the same, just different number. Um, see, these are the ratings on the bulbs here. Um, 700 lumens. You can get higher lumen ratings, but in this room I have six fixtures, so that's more than enough light. The nice thing about this kit is you can adjust the, the light color of these. Uh, it's right over here. Um, you can change it. There's uh, five different options there, so they're multi-use. You can use them in different rooms depending on what kind of lighting you need. Um, for this room, I'm probably going to use the, the bright white or the neutral. Haven't quite decided yet. Um, you do kind of need to know which uh, setting you want before you finally plug the fixture in. It is easy enough to, to drop down the can. Uh, the adjustable part again once you get to that point but uh, it's good to know which one you want to go with before you get too carried away um, what's inside the box so if you're like me you can even read this throw that away 
I didn't need these little thingies here. They're just like a clamp-on style clamp. Uh, and then uh, your fixtures. Okay, so comes with, this kit comes with four different fixtures. They probably have one that does more, but that's uh, fine. And then it also comes with this little pigtail here. And a little, that little connector goes onto the fixture side. So it just plugs into the fixture. This little guy right here looks familiar. If you have a screw-in type bulb, medium base, they call it screw-in type bulb, would obviously make this installation much more easier. However, I got, what do I do with it? I saw it earlier. This here, style, which is a CFL bulb, compact fluorescent. And uh, of course, when you have a fluorescent fixture, you could either have a ballast built into the unit. This one does not. This is why I hate these fixture, these previous fixtures so much because now you have a ballast. So we got to bypass the ballast on this retrofit here. It's the point of the video. Obviously, if you just had the screw in type, it would make this super easy, but I don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this little guy off here as close as I can to the, the adapter. That way I get more wire to work with and we'll tuck up all the wire up into the fixture when we're done. So overall, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Oh, and uh, my wife's out of town. So um, this is when I do all these honeydew type projects and so I got a sink full of dishes and it's not normally like that. I normally do all my own dishes but when she's uh, here she wouldn't let that fly so anyways let's continue. Okay so what do you need to do the job? You need a good pair of wire strippers hopefully something like these here these are really nice uh, basically one one clip and uh, it it cuts the uh, insulation and then you pull pull the insulation off with the pliers on the end there super easy to use um, they do make other cheaper kind of strippers the kind that you got to kind of you grip way down here inside the handle and then you twist it around and I personally like these for this job it makes it so much easier um, these are pretty nice ones they're about I don't know 25 30 bucks maybe I'm not sure can't remember how much I paid for them You'll need a smaller Phillips screwdriver and you'll need something to cut off wires with off the ballast because you'll be abandoning the ballast. So you need a good set of, uh, I think they call these angle cutters. And then you'll need some wire nuts. Now you'll be taking off quite a few wire nuts when you take apart your ballast. Um, so I usually reused a lot of my wire nuts, but uh, it's good to have some in case you don't have enough. Um, you can never have enough wire nuts, I guess they say. Um, you could buy a bag of these, like like 25 for five bucks. So you don't need very big ones. Um, just uh, enough to, to uh, put a couple 16, 18 gauge wires together and uh, that's it. Okay, now on to the, the disassembly of your old unit. Hmm, so I'm up here at the top of the kitchen now. Kids always wonder what happened to all their Nerf darts. Here they are. Okay, up close and personal, this ugly fixture. I can't stand these things. I never thought they were very attractive to begin with. And, you know, at the time they were cheap, but it's kind of old technology we need to get rid of. It's going to save, like... Basically this bulb up here, I think uses about 25, 20 watts. I'm not sure. The new LEDs use seven. Um, obviously incandescent would probably use about 60 watts. So these are better, but unfortunately they don't last. And that's environmental waste. So you can't just throw these in the trash. I mean, you can, but it's not really very nice. So uh, that's just one more thing you gotta deal with. Finding a place that recycles these and driving them down there wasting gas you know so anyhow uh first step is remove that little bulb there it just pops right out and uh just grab onto it and uh sorry i don't have a cameraman here so i gotta kind of stop and do this before i forget another great tool to have while you're doing this is one of these headband flashlights 
and possibly even a flashlight you can stick up in your attic to shine at the ballast as you're working on it. Um, you could just stick it up through the hole once we remove the light fixture. Um, I find that this is more than enough for me because wherever I look at, this little guy follows my head and looks at it too. So this is pretty helpful. Um, if you don't have one of these, these are, these are great for working on cars and things. And especially to have in your car if you break down on the side of the road or something. You know, you, back in the day, you know, it was your dad yelling at you to point the flashlight somewhere and he'd yell at you and keep yelling at you because you're not pointing it where you're supposed to. Anyways, uh, those days are long gone and these are pretty great. They run about 40, 50 hours on instead of triple A's, so pretty nice. So now, obviously, I got the power shut off to the lights. Um, I am home alone. I could probably just turn off the switch. There's not going to be any power going to the lights if the switch is off, but you never know. So I just went to the breaker and shut everything off and everything is safe. And uh, of course, you know, if this was an OSHA, OSHA regulated facility, I would check it twice or three times with my meter and, and do all that stuff. But you can do that if you like. Uh, I'm pretty confident these are safe to work on at this point. So we will continue. All right, so I got my headlamp on. Oh, and I forgot to mention too, that safety glasses are helpful. Um, you're gonna get a lot of stuff falling down, insulation, pieces of plaster, and pieces of plastic wire, whatever garbage is up there. So uh, it's always nice to have safety glasses, possibly even a dust mask, you know, cause you got attic dust up there and it's gonna come down on you. So it, it always helps to have that stuff. So when you get to this point, the light bulb is out. Um, these little, I don't know what they're called, beauty rings or whatever they are. Uh, they just pull right out. Uh, it helps if you kind of wiggle it a little bit. See like I'm doing there, each side. They're spring, they're attached with these little springs you'll see when you pull it down. And so once you kind of break the paint and the plaster off around the sides here, they just pull right out. So part of it out there and so now it'll start coming down do this the best i can without a cameraman but anyhow uh once you get to this point you'll see these springs here it's kind of like a little mouse trap you just squeeze these off the little hooks there's little hooks on the inside which you'll see uh there's two of these one on each side 180 degrees apart just squeeze them and then uh this whole little cone just comes right out all right, so here's what we're looking at. Here are these little springs. You just pop them off the little hooks from the inside of the can. Um, it also has a little gasket that seals, this one does anyways, it seals it to the ceiling. You will not need that for the replacement. Um, they don't even come with new ones, and obviously these probably wouldn't fit on your new model, so don't worry about that. Right to the recycling. Okay, so here's what lies beneath the cone or above the cone, I guess you could say. You got these little screws here you'll have to take off. There's four of them on this particular can. Some have three, some have just two. And then that little uh, socket holder thingy, whatever it is, it's got wing nuts on this one. You'll need to pull that off. So just undo the wing nuts. You might have to pry on this little area here just to keep the other side of the, the nut from spinning. Um, I noticed a few of them did that. So if you just put a little pressure on this bracket as you're turning that nut, they'll come right off. And then uh, I'll get going on that and then we'll go to the next step. All right, so basically at this point, I ended those wing nuts and I pulled this holding thing down you got four wires under there. You might just have two, depending on what model you got. Um, you're gonna cut all those wires. So there's basically no, it's kind of a point of no return here. Um, you're gonna cut these wires. You're gonna wanna leave yourself as much wire as possible. I just cut just right there where that black touches the red. Same with the blue with the black, uh, Looks like heat shrink tubing touches the blue. I just cut all four of those wires with my angle cutters. And then at that point, this whole bracket thing will come off. 
All right, so I got my wires cut off. Um, here's what I got. This little guy here cut off and this is the old socket. And uh, obviously I haven't fallen off the ladder fluttering around on the floor dead yet. So turn off your power. At least turn off your switch before you get to this point. You know, if you're, you just want to get away with turning off the switch, that's on you. But uh, put a piece of tape or something over it to prevent people from accidentally turning it on while you're working. Trust me, it happens. Uh, used to work in a warehouse and we talk about lockout, tag out and things like that. And obviously I'm at home right now, a lot of other people here, but it's always good to be saved. Um, 120 is probably... 120 volts is probably the voltage that kills more people than anything because you got all these weekend warrior people like me that think they know what they're doing and obviously honestly I'll tell you right now I'm not an expert on this stuff but uh, you got these weekend warrior types that think oh yeah 120 it's not as much as 220 or 480 it won't hurt more people get killed by 220 or 120 than just about any voltage because uh, they're just not being safe so Anyways, this is now uh, trash, so it'll go into the trash basket there. All right, so next step, you got these screws here you're gonna take off. There's one here, just like that. They're just little sheet metal screws. I don't know what size wrench fits on that, maybe a 3 16 um, You could use that. A little short handle screwdriver is probably the easiest. There's four of them on this model. And then this whole can will either drop straight down or sometimes you can just push it up into the attic, just out of the way for a little bit um, because we're gonna need to work on the ballast. So we gotta move this can out of the way. All right, so I'm gonna take these screws off and then I'll show you how I get the can um, out of the way to do the next step. All right, so the can is out. Luckily this one came out through the bottom. Um, it's really not a big deal if it doesn't because you can just push it through the top, but if you have insulation like me, this is sprayed in insulation. So it's, uh, it looks like a, I don't know, like a woolly mammoth teddy bear or something up there. And, uh, I don't want to disturb that because that's keeping everything efficient for the house. But anyways, uh, here's the can. There's the wires that we cut earlier and it's got a piece of armored cable. They call it armor cable or BX. Follow that and that will take you to the ballast. And then the ballast has a little door on it. it has a clip on, usually it's on the right side and there's a tab on the left side and the tab goes in a little slot and then when you take the clip off the right side, the whole door to the ballast opens up and you can work on the wiring in there. So I'm gonna do that next here. All right, so in case you haven't noticed, I turned my, my ladder around because the ballast ended up being behind me and I didn't want to twist around on the ladder and fall off. And another, one of the other things that kills homeowners is falling off ladders, okay? If you're afraid of ladders and probably hire a professional to do this. So that's the ballast, that's the door of the ballast. And then on the side, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little clip right there. I know, I need a head mounted camera, but anyways, there's a little clip right there. You'll see it when you get there. It's pretty easy to figure out. You just push on the little tab and it opens right up. All right, so there is the door of the ballast. That's that tab I was telling you about. It fits in a little slot on one side and then on this side, there's a little spring Kind of like open up a, an air filter box on your car. If you have a Honda, you'll know what I'm talking about. Those little tab retainers, you just push it to one side and then this little door just literally just pop right open because there's no more springs holding it down. So I'm just gonna set that and knowing my luck, that's gonna fall off my ladder, but I'm gonna put that somewhere out of the way for now. And then up here, now we have our ballast opened. Don't let all those wires intimidate you. That's mostly just ballast wiring and uh, we're gonna get rid of most of that. I'll show you which ones we're gonna keep and which ones we need to get rid of. 
Let me untangle this bird nest and then we'll get going on that. Oh, and there'll be a wire tie in here that ties a bunch of these wires together. Just carefully cut that off without cutting your wires and uh, untangle that mess. You can go ahead at this time too and take off all your wire nuts, take off every single one of them except the one on the green ground and it'll be attached to a uh, an un uh, jacketed wire you can see it right there that looks like a coat hanger um, it doesn't matter if you undo that by mistake but uh, you don't you don't need to mess with it it's just gonna stay connected we still do need a ground and that's gonna be your ground so we don't even need to, to mess with it but I'll show you here in a minute all right so we got the bird nest untangled all the wire caps are off kind of want to show you this part because this can get kind of confusing if you've never done one of these before. Uh, first time you've done one of these it's going to look like overwhelming but it really isn't. Okay so right there at the top of the ballast box that is the wiring from your house. That's what comes from your switch. In this particular situation here this system of lights has six fixtures so these are all what they call daisy chain together. So I have actually two um, strands of Romex coming out of here. Romex is that sheathed wiring that they use in residential construction, newer homes anyways. Um, so anyways, I got two sets of wires coming down from here. So as you can see, I left a lot of those still put together. And there's my ground, there's my hot, and there's my neutral. Um, if you have a single strand, uh, just a single light fixture you're changing out, you only have one of each wire. See, I have two of each. So you only have one white, one black, and one ground. Remember what I said too, don't disconnect anything with the ground, just keep that together. Um, I, I didn't even need to take the cap off of that one. I'll put it right back on. Okay, so you won't need to mess with that. That mess of wiring coming out right there in the middle, all these small little stranded wires is what is from your original ballast. So we are gonna cut all those off. We don't need those anymore. We're not running a ballast. We're running it straight to the house. LEDs don't have ballasts. Um, and then these wires here, be careful here. Do not um, confuse these. What you're gonna do is we're gonna remove two of those and we're gonna leave two of them. So we'll leave one blue and one red. It doesn't matter which one. We just need to leave one of each. Those are the wires that are coming out of your can. So we got one, two, three, four wires coming out of our can. The other end of it is these ones right here. Um, so I kind of have them pushed out of the way. Definitely, whatever you do, do not cut anything with the wires coming from the house. So if you see that sheath cabling there, don't cut those off because then you'll need to have an electrician or somebody come out and rewire it for you. Uh, that wouldn't be fun to do. So anyways, so I'm gonna remove one blue and one red from the lights going from the ballast through the armored cable to the can. So what I'm gonna do is just get my pliers and pull out one of each. Okay, so as you can see, I got two wires removed. The next step, I am going to strip with my fancy wire strippers. Um, you'll definitely want a pair like this, this style with the, um, the stripping tool on the end of the pliers. A lot of them have them down here inside the handle. You need to get inside the can to do this. So it would be almost impossible to do it the other way unless you pull that wire all the way out of the sheath and then fished it back through, which it's kind of a pain. It's a really small cable. Getting a fish tape in there would be impossible. You could probably do it with a hanger or something, but anyhow, just get yourself a nice pair of strippers. You'll have them forever. So now I have these stripped just a little bit off the end there. I only need to do about quarter inch, three eighths, no more than that. And then the next step is to cut off all the ballast wiring coming out of that little hole with the ring in it there the, the white ring around it i don't know what color yours will be 
Um, cut all those off. Do not cut the Romex, okay? Very important. Cut off. There's probably about six wires coming out of there. There's two reds, two blacks, I think a white and a blue. We're going to cut all those off. Okay, so I got my ground with a new cap on it. Red going to white. And then I know this light's bad. That probably looks like green or blue, but that, trust me, that is my blue wire going to the black wire. Okay, next we will tuck all this back up inside this ballast box, put the cover back on, and then we will work in here next. Okay, so here's where you need to cut off this little adapter. Now, some of these kits, they come with multiple different adapters. This one just was on sale and had the, the medium base adapter to it. Um, so, as you can see, I don't have a medium base. I got these ridiculous four prong bulbs. So, um, I'm just going to cut this off. That's all you really need to do. Um, I just chopped it off with as close as I can to the uh, adapter. A pair of wire cutters there. And uh, we will uh, strip off about three eighths once again of wiring once we cut this off and that's what attaches inside your can. All right, some of the progress we just made here. Got the ballast box all buttoned back up. There's that little clip I was telling you about earlier. Now you can see it real good and move some of the insulation. Um, that little clip just pushes to the side and that little door will fling open on you. And there's a little tab there on the other side that goes into the other side of the box. You want to make sure when you put this back together, no foreign stuff gets in there, especially this teddy bear looking insulation stuff. I don't know, sheep dog, whatever you want to call it. Um, make sure there's nothing in there. That's a junction box. You obviously don't want anything flammable inside there. Obviously we put our nuts and wire nuts on very good. No exposed wiring or anything except for the ground. That's normal. Um, but definitely make sure you don't have any exposed wiring before you tuck all that back in there. And then as you do tuck those wires back in, if you've never done that before, it's uh, you got to make sure that those wire nuts don't come loose on you because sometimes they do if you don't get them on tight enough. And uh, you'll have a open circuit in there and trip your breaker, hopefully. If not, uh, you'll have a fire, so be careful. All right, so inside the can, I got my, my uh, two wires there that we modified. From the original system and then i got my i use these little wire nuts for these because uh, leds are super efficient they use very little wattage so these wires are like 18 gauge i want to say and uh, these little smaller wire nuts work great and these are some of the ones that i recycled that were originally for the ballast wiring inside the ballast box that we cut all off that we don't need anymore so to do this job i don't need any wire nuts but I usually have some on hand because, you know, you drop them, they end up underneath the stove or the dishwasher, or under somewhere, the dog comes and gets them, and it's frustrating, so, anyhow. All right, so here's the new clip where we, we're going to clip our new light on. Um, it only goes one way, so you can't mess it up. Okay, there's a grooves on that side and a slot on that side, so it works out pretty good. All right, next step, what we're going to do is push this can back up into its cavity, and then as you get it up in that hole, you're going to uh, twist the can itself and line up these screw holes here with uh, these little screw tabs. There's four of them on this unit. Um, so as you get that up in there, you'll never get it lined up. You got to twist it around to find the holes. And once you do that, little sheet metal screws go right back in. All right, so we got the can back in and uh, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but just make sure when you hook up your wiring, keep it the same uh, scheme as what you did inside the ballast box. Remember, black to blue, red to white, or whatever color you're using, just make sure you get the same wire to the same wire on each side. So, I don't know if you're using a polka dot wire and a yellow wire, make sure everything's the same each side, right? So, I did black to blue and red to white inside the ballast so that's what i'm doing out here black to blue red to white okay so it's back in i'm ready to stick my new retrofit fixture inside this is actually the easiest part of the whole job so it's just one little plug and then uh, set your your color 
your color of the lights that you desire. Um, some aren't adjustable, these ones are. If not, um, just pop them right in at this point. Adjust these lights from these this particular model here. It's the Home Depot Commercial Electric. That's the number there, that's their SKU number. Um, so there's other options here. For my closet, I did warm white. It's a really small closet and it worked out very well. Um, I think I did soft whites in the bathrooms. Actually, I think I did neutral white for one bathroom because it has only one fixture. It's kind of a large room. And that worked out pretty well. For this kitchen here, I'm probably gonna do neutral white just because there is six fixtures and um, you know, they all kind of help each other out. I kind of try to stay away from these two colors here. It just gets kind of annoying to look at. It almost looks like the old fluorescent tube lights you'd see like in a, you know, a commercial building or something like a grocery store. I, I want it still a little bit warm, so I'm gonna put it on neutral. We'll see how it works out. I could always go back and uh, this just, drops right down once you get it in. It's not too hard to go back and change it. It's not something I really want to do, but it's not too bad. So I'm gonna go with neutral on this one. There's the other end of the plug. We're gonna plug it right in. And then these little spring things here, you'll see how these work, but they're exactly like the old ones that came down. You just stick them in, they go into little hooks, and then you just push the whole fixture up and it, these come back down as it goes up. And this is what holds it up into the can wire connection plugged in and then here's these little springs they're sitting in the original hooks that the old system used use the exact same ones just pops right into those and then you can see there i kind of boogered up the ceiling pushing these cans out and that's typical i mean they put so much plaster and this drywall just comes apart so kind of boogered it up a little bit you can get some spackle and fix it if it makes you feel better and uh maybe some paint however these trim rings are big enough that it will hide my, my boo-boos here. So I'm just going to push it up at this point, straight up. And yeah, it's pretty decent. I do have a little bit still showing there. Nothing, some touch-up paint and a rag to clean up my muddy handprints with. And uh, so at this point, we should be able to flip the switch and it should work. All right, so here's the moment of truth here. And there we go. I noticed with these LEDs, there's a bit of a delay, but uh, like a s fraction of a second. I noticed that, but uh, still a lot better than the old system. And I think I got the color pretty close to where I want it. As you can see, these ones are pretty close to the same. Those actually will get brighter. They're the old ones. They just haven't warmed up yet. We talked about that earlier. With six of these going, I think that's gonna greatly improve the lighting in this kitchen. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed. I'm gonna go around and do these other six here. And uh, these ones way up high are kind of a little bit more harder just because it's so high up. But uh, the lower ceilings, like in your bathrooms, closets, things are way much easier than uh, these ones. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, have a good day. Be careful, be safe, turn off your power.